Hello students, in this video we're going to parameterize our solution given that we have a free parameter. So z is the uh, free variable. I keep calling it a free parameter, but free variable, free parameter. We're actually going to turn z into a parameter. Sometimes your solution written in this form here is adequate, but sometimes you'll want to write your solution with a new parameter t and that way you can do things like show that your solution is spanned by two linearly independent vectors for example. Uh, this comes up uh, in the theory of solutions for systems of equations. Alright so let's let z, let's introduce a new parameter t, let's let z equal t. Sometimes people will let z equal s, um, r, they have all kind. You can choose all kinds of letter. I'm just going to choose T. And then I will convert my solution here, x equals five six minus five six z. That that of course is going to become five six minus five six t. And likewise, y is going to equal one eighth minus one eighth t. Now, once I have that, I'm going to do something funny to z here. I'm going to say z is equal to zero plus one t. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to break up my solution now into vectors. So you can start to see how this is lining up, right? I'm going to have a 5 6 1 8 0 is one vector plus a minus 5 6 minus 1 8 1 vector here that's going to be multiplied by the parameter t. And here is the vector form of the solution. So I have x, y, z is equal to this column here, 5, 6, 1, 8, 0, because z is equal to t, right? y is equal to 1 8 plus minus 1 8 t, or 1 8 minus 1 8 t, and x is equal to 5, 6 minus 5, 6 t. So I've taken this column, 5, 6, 1, 8, 0, wrote that as one column vector, plus I've taken this column, wrote that as another vector, minus 5, 6, minus 1 8, 1, and then I factored out the t that's consistent in all of the entries here. So I pull it out. And now I see that my solution, x, y, z, is spanned by these two vectors. Now this might be important when you are, for example, thinking of t as a time, or s might be some kind of control parameter. Um, there's also ways to think of using these two vectors to build your solution space. Now the reason that we call your solution space for x, y, and z, so if, let me get to uh, this point here, and that is the reason we call t a free parameter is because it, we are free to let it equal any value we want. So for example, if t were 0, then your solution would be 5, 6, 1, 8, 0. And you notice that if you plugged x is 5, 6, y is 1 8th, and z is 0 into this top equation here, you would get, uh, you would see that you would get 3. So for example, 5 6 times 3 is 5 halves plus 4 times 1 8th is 1 half, and that's 6, so 5 halves plus 1 half is 6 halves, and I get and then this was 0, so 6 halves is 3. Okay, and you can work your way down. If I let t equal 1, then I'll have 0, 0, and then uh, for the top two entries for x and y, because t is 1, so 5, 6 minus 5, 6 is 0, 1 8 minus 1 8 is 0, and then if t is 1, I'll have 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1, so z is equal to 1. And notice that x being 0 and y being 0, that eliminates these two. And if z is 1, then sure enough, you get 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 1 is 4, 7 times 1 is 7. And so that is a valid solution. So you can just go through and let t be any number you want, and you will get an infinite number of solutions for this system of equations. So that's why we call it a free parameter. We call z a free variable. All right, good luck.